today I'm going to look at kind of a unique game, Game Routers from TSR 1987. It's kind of a light, irreverent, um, post-apocalyptic mutant game, I guess. The uh, central theme is that years after, you know, obviously some kind of nuclear devastation, and there's mutated creatures that humans are making as cyborgs, and these various factions, um, each of the cyborg try to take over the world. The art cover is uh, really nice, a lot of thought gone into it, really conveys the theme, kind of shows you almost kind of cartoonish characters, um, really fits in like the, the lightness of it, but a lot of detail. And it's a, you know, a shelf box kind of game. A lot of good detail here. Um, two six players, ten and up, playable in one or two hours. It's fairly it seems to be fairly straightforward to learn. For more, there's all there's a lot of it's got a ton of detail. It's got the rule book, but then it also has got this world book where it talks in detail about the bioborgs and the factions. So there's twelve different bioborgs. For instance here and then there's six different factions that there they can be part of so a lot of different combinations and more background seven centuries after the golden age of ancients humanity is rebuilding the world your cryptic alliance a secret ancient brotherhood wants to rebuild things in its own image after all if you don't do it some other alliance maybe even those vile selenoid scum will but take over the world and really make it stick Need the ultimate weapon, more than a giant robot, more than a colossal mutated beast, you need a blend of both. You need a bioborg. Then this world book, like I said, this whole book is is theme and background, which is really great. And um, so I'll give you a sense of the factions and uh, the bioborgs themselves. Just one example, um, Crimson Moon. One of the most powerful neutral alliances and respected by the, both Kamarauders and Slugnoids, the Crimson Moon Alliance is a mysterious organization that appeared about two decades ago, putting forth the ideas of serenity and honor in battle and all things. Crimson Moonies have provided invaluable assets to their allies and implacable foes to their enemies. So a little bit about them. Talks about their infantry, armor, air force, fortifications. An example of a bioborg. Kazaro. The Chimpan Zeros are a race from the Gamma Age, a breed of winged monkeys with fell, almost human intelligence. Kazaro, a giant of this type, was driven out of his nest by his fellow creatures. He would have died in the, in the wild had it not been for the man who became his partner. Kazaro has short brownish hair all over his simian body and wings. He also has a set of turboprop thrusters installed beneath each wing, wing membrane. Kazaro often wears a banner covered with wide sayings around his brow. He's the smallest and fastest of the present crop of bioborgs. As far as components, got the rule book, 12 pages, black and white. World book, history, detail of all the bioborgs and factions. So it's really great. It's 20 pages. It's great to have that huge background. And it's all very, you know, light and irreverent. Um, as far as the bioborgs, there's 12 of them. And they come in these cards where you can store components front and back. Each has a section for you know, weapons, when you put your weapon cards. Uh, each has a special power. Put your pods here that you gather and carry. Obviously a description of the character. The uniqueness is in the, the power primarily. Popcorn, I think this is where you, I don't talk about the rules much, I, I think this is where you can, or have your units come with a specific bioborg. So there's Kizaro, the chimp and Zero. Special park can fly six areas per turn. Ignore train and units and areas pass through. Moscow, the Oxoid, 
gets a plus four bonus to defense total, only when defending against an attack. And all these are, they're giant mutants, so they're like between 30 and 70 feet tall. You kind of see perspective of a human here. On go with Gorillion. Power gets a plus four bonus to attack total, only when attacking. Of course, really, really well done art. Film or the Tricerian power add plus three to power values of all ranged weapons. Elvin the Tyrexian power any weapon without a range has a range of one area when Elvin uses it. Weapons that normally have ranges aren't affected. Drex the Pet Gratula power can have a seven card hand. And see here, for instance, are the the counters that correspond. Hog the Kangaroid. Power can carry any of the popcorn that start the turn in the same area as Hog. Cruz the Ursinoid. Power, it means one weapon per combat. Choose those weapons before weapons are revealed in combat. And you can choose from blasters, lasers, sluggers, flamers, missile sonics. Squawk the Penguinoid. Can freeze one Bioborg or all popcorn in one area at any time during its move. Must draw 1d6. If result is less than or equal to number of pod, pod squawks captured, freeze succeeds. If result is greater, freeze fails, a 1 always succeeds. Scav the Volturian. Power pick up any weapons card, pick up, picks up any weapon card lost in combat or discarded. Can I pick up his own lost or discard weapons? And then blip the teleport turtle. Power teleport to home fort or random pod area. Roll 2d6. Teleport for retreat after lost battle. Then last but not least, we miss the hamsterian. Power can burrow beneath one area per turn, ignore its train and units in that area. And these are the corresponding movement counters that, that go with those. And there's six stands, and there's 12 units, so obviously you put, it's up to six players, so you can just put them in the stands, whichever ones you're using. There's cards involved, there's 108 cards. There's six turn cards, which have this backing, and they're basically to randomize the sequence that players go in. Then the rest of them have this, this back. And so there's... Weapon cards, which show the power, and then if they're ranged weapons, they're blue, and others are black. And if they have a circle around them, that means they have a immunity, they provide immunity against other weapons for the Bioborg. The other cards, reinforcements cards for Hoover Tank soldiers, Gamma Jets, and any. And factoids are different facts of these traveling mobile computer units that tell you stuff that can help you. There's a lot of different variations, but for instance, when you play the card, you can exchange your remaining hand of cards for up to five cards from any player's hand, that sort of thing. And there's six different Cryptic Alliance factions he choose from. Um, each of the cards has these are pods you have, units you have in your fortresses, the movement and uh, terrain effects Seem, seem to be the same for each. The The World book talks about their history and a lot of detail about what their armaments look like, but in battle they all function the same. It's all for flavor. And they talk about historical alliances and which ones don't get along. You can use that or not, or just go against the ones you want to, but the, the World book gets a lot of background flavor, but it seems like functionally they all which are the same. And it's up to you if you want to follow their history, I guess. There's 13 of these hexes that you place to make your playing board. They have different terrain in them. Train keys shown here. These are the borders, mountains, water, clear area, pot area, and city. Cities are where you can choose you choose a city to put your fort in. Pods, pod area obviously are where pods appear. And they're randomized 2 through 12 for the die roll. 
There's four dice. And 200 counters, standard half inch by half inch. And these are the individual unique counters. There's soldiers of six different types. Hoover tanks of six different types. Gamma jets of six different types. There's pod. Marker city ruins. One fortress for each of the types. They have a uh, undestroyed side and a destroyed side. And then markers for the various cryptic alliances. These are their symbols. The soldiers can... So one, mo one movement point is per area and this would be an area for instance. These would be different areas. It'd be uh, soldiers can go three, the vertex four, bioborg six. Gamma jets are unlimited. They can go anywhere in a turn. Train, the mountains, uh, tanks can't go there. Water, soldiers can't go in. Bioborgs, they can, they have to stop when they get there and they can only go one per turn. Cities stop when entering, except jets. <coughs> Rules, original rules design, Alan Barney, rule book, Jeff Grubb, development, team here, cover art, Keith Parkinson. So the cryptic lines is Crim Crimson Moon, Du Bois, Fallouts, Lab Rats, Men in Black, and Racers. Objects of the game, in four or five or six person game, first player who do destroys Three enemy fortresses wins game. Each player can trust an opponent's force only once. Each time attackers trust someone's fort, each attacking player gets one coup counter. The counters with the cryptic lion symbols to show that he has slagged the opponent's fort. First player to collect three coup markers wins the game. In a two or three person game, the object is to be the first to trash everybody else's fortresses. A player cannot win the game if his fortress is in ruins. He must rebuild it before he can win the game. Two players do it simultaneously. The winner is the player with the lowest turn order number. Usually players spend the first part of the game gathering pods. These bundles of energy give you extra wallop in battle, make it easier for your Bioborg to trash fortresses. After you've gathered some pods and feel brave, you can set on your mission of world conquest. The game is played in turns. Each turn has six steps. Must be performed in the order. One, deal turn cards. The six turn cards are collected and reshuffled. One turn card is dealt face up to each player. This determines the order for the turn only. Use all six turn cards, even if there are fewer than six players in the game. Each player gets one turn card, and the rest are set aside for the next turn. Trade cards and draw reinforcements. In turn order, each player takes one card from the deck. Players can now trade cards from their hands. Not from the Bioborg layout sheets. For other players' cards, wheeling dealing is strongly encouraged. The cards do not have to be shown to the players you're trading with. Deals can include pods. If pods are in fortresses, the deals can include turn cards. If you want to trade positions in turn order, deals cannot include Bioborgs or army units. You can get reinforcements and new cards in several ways. You can turn reinforcement cards in your hand for the indicated number of army units. If you don't have enough arm units of the proper type, you're out of luck. You cannot voluntarily remove your own arm units from the board to flip them over and change them into another type of arm unit. You can burn, use up an energy pod that is in your fortress or with your bioborg. Move the pod from play and pick up any combination of five units or cards from the deck. You can take five cards, five arm units, any type you available. Or any combination of cards and army units. The total is five. Reinforcements appear in your fortress. Each player can burn only one pod in the step. You can pass this turn and cash in your turn card. Discard the turn card and take the, its number in either cards from the deck, army units of your choice, or any combination of cards and units. Reinforcements appear in your fortress. A player who has cast in his turn card cannot move units, attack, or pick up pods. Unless his units are the sole occupants of the area when the, with the pod this turn. You can defend against attacks, pick up unconnected, uncontested pods, 
and play cards as usual. After all players have finished trading, whining, bickering, and getting reinforcements, each player must play or discard cards to get down to the maximum of five cards in his hand. Three, play spots. Each player rolls two dice and places a pod in that numbered area. All players get to place a pod. Four, move in turn order. Each player moves any or all of its units according to the rules of given and moving. At any point during its move, a unit can pick up a pod. It's in the same area as the pod, but this ends the unit's movement for the turn. If a unit starts its movement in the same area as the pod, it cannot move once it picks up the pod. 5. Rebuild fortresses and refit Bioborgs and fortresses. Bioborg is in its own fortress, can be repaired and refitted, explained in rebuilding and refitting. Trash fortress can, only, can be rebuilt if any unit of the owning player brings a pod to the fortress's area during the movement stop. The pod is burning to a step and the fortress is re rebuilt. 6. Resell attacks. In turn order, each player can attack enemy units of fortresses if he wishes. Other players can ally with either side in these battles under the rules given in attacking. A player is never required to attack. Hand of cards. Certain cards of the deck can only be used if they are placed face up in front of you. They are in effect continuously until you lose them or someone takes them away from you. Both cards you hold hidden from you and the cards placed face up in front of you come towards the five card limit in your hand. The cards in the bar your Bioborg's layout sheet do not count towards this limit. The five card limit must be observed at the end of every step of the turn. If you gain cards during a step and go over this limit, the step cannot, be, cannot end until you have discarded down to five cards. Similarly, if another player gets to you, take your entire hand of cards. The slam gets your face of cards as well as the ones held hidden in your hand. Whenever a player picks from your hand, he does so blindly with the backs of the cards facing you. Your Bioborg. Bioborgs are giant humanic creatures. These semi intelligent creatures are remarkably fast in combat. Heal ones rapidly and are just barely smart enough to follow orders. These amiable beasties were recruited by the cryptic alliances and outfitted with powerful weapons crafted out of their bodies. Bioborg's weapons, name, power, immunity. If it has a ranged weapon, it can attack anything within the areas of the Bioborg. If the weapon name is printed black, it has no range. Power value is printed. The higher the number, the more easily the weapon can, can slag the enemy. Special instructions, some cards depict one-shot weapons. These must be discarded after use. Immunity weapons, certain weapons grant immunity. Against specific weapons, immunity weapons are generally less powerful than other weapons, but they negate any attack of the weapon listed in the bottom of the card. Immunity weapons are indicated by a white circle around the power values on the cards. Your Bioborg, spe your Bioborg special ability. Each Bioborg has a unique ability. The ability is described briefly on the layout sheet and in greater depth in the world book. Whenever a Bioborg ability conflicts with these rules, Bioborg's ability prevails. Bye bye Bioborg. When a Bioborg has no cards left on its layout sheet, it must return to its fortress as soon as possible. There it can be repaired and refitted as usual. If the owner's fortress has been trashed, the owner must get a pot to the fortress area and burn it to the rebuild the fort. The Bioborg can then Refit, be refit during the rebuild and refit stop. Army units, reinforcements. You get more army units by turning in reinforcement cards. You can turn in these cards only during step two of a turn. Cards and reinforcements of a turn. There are four sets of cards. Hoover tank soldiers, common jets, and any cards. Each set has four cards. To turn in reinforcement cards, simply place the cards in the discard pile. Take the listed number of reinforcements. The units appear in your fortress. If your fortress has been trashed, you must rebuild it before you can place units. Reinforcements can move and fight right away during the appropriate steps of the turn. The more cards of a set turn in at once, the more units that set gives you. One card is worth two units, two cards are worth five. When you turn at the same time, three cards of a set give you eight units of that type. And four cards give you all the available units of the type. Cards labeled any give you units of your choice in any combination. Turning in two any cards at once, for instance, gives you five. Any armor card can also act as a wild card, substituting for any other re replacement reinforcement card. 
For example, two who are just cards and an, any card. It's treated as three who are ten cards, <clears throat> but no set can be turned in with more than four cards. You can also play reinforcement cards to give another player new units. They appear in his fortress. Set of reinforcements cards can only be used for one player. Can mix different players' units as reinforcements from the same cards. Abilities of arm units. Each type of arm unit has its own unique ability. Soldiers are the only units besides bioworks that can carry pods. Gamma jets can travel anywhere on the board in one turn. Hoover tanks can attack at a range of one. They can attack enemy units in areas next to their own. All types of arm units have the same combat strength. All are worth one point. Energy pods. Energy podenoids, pods for short, are mutated plants that absorb and store energy from the ground. There are certain areas where pods tend to sprout, numbered areas of map hexes. When placed with bioborgs or fortress pods, can be forced to release their energy, enabling the owner only player to gain advantage of the combat or to build enough material to send more units on the field of battle. Claiming energy pods, pod that is carried by unit or located in a fortress that's a claimed fortress is called a claim pod. All our pods are unclaimed. Usually only bioborgs and soldiers can claim pods. The special card temporarily enables Gamma Jet to carry a pod. To, cl to claim a pod, you must move bioborg soldier into the area with a pod. Once the unit claims a pod, it cannot move for the rest of the turn. The soldier can carry one pod while bioborg can carry up to five. The unit moves normally while carrying pods. If bioborgs are soldiers of two, or more players are in an area. When a pod appears, the unit of a player with the lowest turn number can grab the pod before the other player's chance. Transferring pods. Anytime one of your pod carrying units is in or passes through an area with another unit that can carry a pod, the pod can be transferred from one unit to another. The unit dropping the pod continues way, but the unit picking up the pod must end its movement for the turn. Pods can be dropped off to fortress as the unit passes through fortress's area. Storing energy pods in fortresses. You can store up to five energy pods in your fortress. Pods that are carried by Bowerborgs and army units don't count against the five pod fortress limit. Burning pods. Pod with a Bowerborg or fortress can be burned at various times during a turn. When you burn a pod, it is removed from play and has one of the following effects. Your choice. If burning during step two of a turn, cards and reinforcements, the pod gives any combination of five cards and reinforcement army units. Reinforcements appear in your fortress. You must be at or below the fight card limit to your hand before the step ends. Each pod burned during combat adds the roll of one die to your attack or defense total. Or it enables you to rebuild your fortress if the pod is in the fortress's area during step 5 of a turn. Rebuild and refit. Moving. Each hexagon of the game board is divided into areas. You can move any or all of your units. You cannot move your units between areas that touch at only one point. There is a machine that share a common edge. Hoover tanks and flying units can cross water freely. Non-flying bioborgs must stop. When they enter and then only move one per turn, soldiers cannot enter mountains. Hoover tanks cannot enter mountain areas. All their units are unaffected. City. City that contains player fortress is friendly to player. His units treat the areas if it is clear terrain. All their city areas are unfriendly. Any unit, except flying unit or flying by a board, that enters an unfriendly city, area must stop its movement for that turn. Destroyed cities. The bio board can demolish one city area per turn. By entering it and saying I'm destroying it, the Bioborg must stop moving for that turn. Place a ruin mark on the city area, show it's been leveled. All units can move through the ruined city as if it's clear terrain. But Bioborg can never destroy the city area that contains its cryptic alliance's fortress. Any attack on a fortress automatically destroys the city area fortress is in, regardless of whether the attack succeeds or not. Fortresses, player who wants a fortress, must give permission to pass. To an enemy unit that wants to pass through his area contains fortress. Moving in enemy areas. Army units can enter but not pass through areas with enemy units. Non flying bioborgs can freely pass through areas with enemy army units, but they cannot but they can only enter and not pass through. Those contain enemy bioborgs. Flying bioborgs can move through any terrain, through areas of bioborgs. 
Damage jets fly high above the ground, so neither train or enemy units into the movement. When you occupy an area, you may grant permission to pass to enemy units. You can let some units have forced you and block others, or let some. Rebuilding and retrofitting. Sometimes you might want to change a bird's layout. You can only change the layout in a fortress to then rebuild and refit step. Return. When refitting, you can move any or all cards to positions on the layout sheet or exchange Battleborg weapons for others in your hand. The new layout can be used in combat next turn. Can be used in combat the same turn. This is a step in which trash fortresses are rebuilt. Attacking, you can attack any number of times per turn. Each attack against only one player. Each of your units can attack only once per turn. You don't have to attack. And your units can attack any one, any player's enemy units if they finish moving in the same area. Except in Hoover tanks and some Bioborg weapons can do ranged attacks against uh, units one or two areas away. Attacks are declared in turn order. The player who declares an attack is the attacker. This one is the defender. The defending unit can be attacked a number of times in a turn, but a unit can only attack once per turn. Resolve each attack when it's declared. After all players are finished, attacking the step is over. Only Bioborg's army units can initiate attacks. Bioborg's army units and fortresses can defend against attacks. Your Bioborg can attack with only one of the weapon cards in the layout sheet. If you have no Bioborg or army units, you can attack. A Bioborg, a Bioborg can attack even if it has no weapons. It gets one die roll plus one die for every pot it burns in combat. The opponent can defend with one we weapon card on his layout sheet if his Bioborg is attacked, or one card from his hand if his fortress is attacked, and any army units that are in the area being attacked. Even if the attacker is using a ranged weapon, the defender can reply with any weapon available. He doesn't have to use a ranged weapon to defend. Uh, every each player in a battle can play only one weapon card. How to do it? Announce the attack. Announce which player's units are attacking in which area. All defenders' units in that area are automatically defend. Units of the defender outside the attack areas cannot help out unless he's got a special card. You cannot attack units of different players in one attack. Declare which of your units attacking your bioborg, one or more army units or a combination. If the attacker has units with ranged weapons, Bioborg or Hoover tanks, they can attack units in any area within the range. Units without ranged weapons must be in the same area as a defender to attack. Other players join in. The attacker and defender can ask other players to add their forces to the battle. Others cannot join in unless invited by the principal attacker or defender. Units of other players can aid the defender only if they are in the same area as the defending units or if they have a card, special card. Other players can join the attack if their units are in the same area or if they have units with ranged weapons that are within the range of the battle. These are called allies. Allies have their army unit strengths, Bioborg weapons. If they're in battle, the roll of one die and the dice rolls for every pod burned to the totals of the size they join. Allied army units cannot be withdrawn unless once committed However, allies can add can aid both sides in battle if they have the army units to do so. Declare units burned. If you play in a combat, must simultaneously declare how many pods he's burning. To aid in the effort, each pod adds one roll of one die to the attack or defense total. Each player picks up all the pods he could use. All players simultaneously show how many of their pods they wish to burn in this, the fray. No player can burn more than five pods in a combat. Show weapon cards. Each player with a Bioborg in the combat picks a card from his layout sheet. Turn them up at the same time. And if an immunity weapon negates the Bioborg's weapon, that weapon's power value is not added to the owner's total. But the immunity weapon's owner gets to add the power value of his weapon to his total. The defending forces are in their fortress. The defender can use a weapon card. He's holding his hand as his fortress's weapon. When both a Bioborg and a fortress are among the defending forces, the pods burned and a weapon card used must come from the same source. If the defender uses the Bioborg's pods, he must use a weapon card on the Bioborg's layout sheet. 
pods become a fortress. The weapon must come from the defender's hand. Figure attack total. Take your opponent's take your weapon's power value, unless it's negated, and add one point for each army unit attacking. If your barborg isn't present, you don't get a weapon. Then roll one die plus one die for every pod you burned. Add the dice totals to the Bioborg weapon value and the army and strength. This is your attack total. Note only Bioborgs and fortresses can burn pods. Soldiers can carry pods, but the pods cannot be used unless they are given to a Bioborg or fortress before pods are declared in combat. Figure the defense total. The defender adds the power value of his weapon, unless it was negated, to the number of army units he has defending. He gets to roll one die, plus one dice. If his fortress is defending, plus one die for every body he burned. He has the dice rolls to his weapon and army total, get to his defense total. Resolve the attack. If the attack total is higher than the defense total, the attacker wins. The defense is total than, higher than the attack, the defender wins. <laughs> Go to the outcome. Calling off an attack, it occasionally happens, you clear an attack and then decide, don't look good. You can call off an attack unless one of the following has occurred. The defender has played a card in response to your upcoming attack. Another player has joined the battle as an ally on, the other, on either side. Pots to be burned in combat have been declared. Outcome, winners, pods gain any of the loser's pods that he can no longer carry. If the units carrying them has been eliminated, these, for instance, these pods are picked up immediately. Energy pods are never damaged or destroyed by combat, except when burned. Cards: turn your bioboy card face down its layout sheet, or discard it if it is a one-shot weapon or defense. You draw one card from the principal loser's hand at random. This includes face-up cards, but not cards on the bio worksheet. After you've drawn your allies, each draw one card as well in turn order. If the loser runs out of cards, the remaining allies get nothing. Army units lose nothing. Losers, pods, the wing side gets all the unburned pods. They can no longer be carried. If one losing player has to draw pods, his allies cannot pick up pods. You must retreat and leave the pods there. Cards, discard weapon card used. The winner and winning allies each draw at random, one card from your hand, from the principal loser. First one draws, then the winning allies draw in turn order. Army units lose a number of army units equal to the difference between your total and your opponent's total. So if the winning was 35 and you had 29, you lose 6. Principal loser. Can choose to take losses from his allies units. The allies have no say in the matter. Retreat. Retreat the Bioborg against thriving army units to any adjacent army area of enemy units. Army to any adjacent area empty of enemy units. If no area qualifies, move the losing units to an adjacent enemy occupied area. Each losing ally gets to choose which adjacent area goes to. If the losing areas are in a fortress, if the losing units are in a fortress, the fortress has been trashed. And the survivors must retreat. Fighting over pods. The combat loser can no longer carry all the pods in the area. They go uncontrolled to the area. If the principal winner of an attack has any bioborg or soldier units in the loser's area, these units can claim the loser's dropped energy pods. But if the winner has no bioborg or soldiers in the area, any winning ally with the proper units can claim the pods. If two or more allies can take the pods, the ally who goes first in turn order gets first crack of the pods. Trashing fortress, fortresses. When a battle occurs in an area of the fortress, the only player's forces are considered to be in the fortress. The fortress cannot aid an attack, but it can't aid in defense with a weapon card. Pods, and an extra die roll. If a bioborg is also defending, only one weapon card can be played by the defender. When a fortress is on the losing side in battle, the winner and winning allies trust fortress and any player can try to trash fortress by attacking it. The attack works just like an attack on enemy units. The owner can defend the fortress with all units in the area and a weapon card in his hand. He gets the one die fortress bonus. Fortress adds one die for total two dice to defense total. And he can spend any or all pods 
in the fortress to get more dice bonuses. If the fortress owner loses the combat, the fort, the fort is trashed and the winner and winning allies get all the pods. Losers forces can't care away. The winner and winning allies each get a card from loser's hand. The winner and winning allies also get a coup counter with a loser's cryptic lines symbol on it. It signifies that they have bumped the loser's fort, cannot move on to a new target. The player can trash the same fortress more than once. But only gets a card for the first trashing. Subsequent trashing oops, do not gain anything. Trash fortress cannot be trashed again until it has been rebuilt, either by the owner or another player using a construction bots. We're here card. If your fortress has been trashed, you can either refit your Bioborg. You cannot refit your Bioborg or bring in reinforcements until you rebuild it. Player cannot destroy his own fortress. Sample combat. Then factories are kind of mobile computers that go around there and give you can give you some aids and combat and other things so some are army cards let you increase the abilities of your army units construction bots were here can be used to rebuild your own fortress or someone else's fortress exit stage left this card enables you to retreat from combat factoid void this card can be played to negate affected cards that have been played against any player. Fortress Plumbing Repair. This card is cumulative with a Super Soldier's card. If you have both these cards, each soldier counter in your fortress defends as fort counters. Must be discarded after battle. Freeze. This card can be played any time your opponents move. You can only freeze units in the area the occupier of the card is played. Gate Crashers. This card can be used to move units into a battle area to attack or defend. You get attacking units within range of battle. Heat Wave. Any soldiers who are with your Bioborg fortress at the end of this step four are safe. All other so soldiers fry in the heat and remove the board. Hypnosis. This is your combat opponent is about to choose a weapon. Point to one face down card and force them to play that one. He's trying to range, and you pick a non-range. The Bioborg's attack is cancelled. Landside. This card makes one mountain area passable to your Hoover tanks for this turn only. Lost Patrol. This card enables the defender to eliminate 1d6 of the attacker's army units. Mutate and mass mutate cards. Mutate cards so the player rearranged cards in his Bioborg layout and switch any or all of them with cards in his hand without having to go to the fortress. Rapid Oxidation. This card rests one of the weapons on an opponent's Bioborg. Without looking at them, pull one cards out and place in a discard pile. First combat result. This card is solely for the defensive use. Running Broad Jump. This card enables the Bioborg to move seven areas this turn. Ignore the train and units. In the areas it passes through. Side of Hand. When you play this card, take up to five cards in his hand, including those armor cards face up in front of him. Give him your hand of cards and discard this card. Teleport. This card moves all units, including Bioborg and but not Fortress, in one area to one other area of your choice. Of your choice to teleport units to not get any other movement this turn. So here's setup. First of all, choosing I'll be doing a three player, and first of all, choosing the cryptic alliances and the bioborgs. So I'm gonna go with uh, Squawk the Penguinoid with the Razors, Drux the Pecretula with the Lab Rats, fittingly, Kazaro the Chimp and Zero with the Crimson Moon, and then you choose the one to six cards to see what order we go in to lay out the cards. And here I've laid out all 12. Then each player draws from the deck and they can put their weapons down if they get any. If they don't then they redraw and they can have up to five cards. So for Squawk the Penguinoid he's got a Transarmic Psionic Aura and anti ampic Plasma Projector and for his cards, he's got a construction bots for here, mind mill, rapid oxidation, mass mutate, and the affected void. Drox 
As for weapons and omni ionized gas emissions, a bio hyperbolic water cannon. And for his cards, he's got a pad, pod bonanza, army card cargo jet, army card tailwinds, upheaval teleport. Kazaro, he's only got water weapon, he's got a polythermic water cannon. And he's got five cards, sleight of hand, landslides, five finger discount, mutate, and teleport. As far as their unique abilities, Squawk the Penguin can freeze one Bioberg or all popcorn in one area at any time during its move. Must roll 1d6. If result is less than equal to number of pods, Squawk carries. Free succeeds. Result is greater. Freeze fails. A 1 always succeeds. Drox Puck. Pack Retula, power, can have a seven card hand. Kizaro the Chimpanzero can fly six areas per turn, ignores terrain, and units in areas pass through. So let's do a couple turns here to give a sense of it. First of all, each takes a turn order card. So, Penguinoid, Drax, Chimpanzero. So obviously when you uh, play against others, you keep some of your cards secret, but I'll just show them since I'm not doing that. First of all, Kazaro gets a Freeze. Drax gets a Army Card Super Jets. And Squawk gets Hoover Tank Reinforcements. And you need to maintain five cards in your deck, so... You got reinforcements, so he, Skulk will use the get two Hoover tanks, which he places in this fort. And Skulk's in the city up here by eight. Drox is in the city here by six. Kizaro's in the city here by two. And they all start with four of each kind of unit in their forts. And Kizaro will just discard the freeze to maintain five in his hand. Now placing pods, so each roll. Ten. Five goes in ten. Two. Another in two. So they'll I'll have them all leave half their their soldiers in their fort and then move the other half. So of Kazar go first. He's quite fortunate because he's got several pods nearby. He can move six. Actually, his power is that he can move six and ignore terrain. So he can go one, two, three, four. He can get that pod. And then he can send a couple soldiers here. Soldiers can move three, so he can go one, two, one, two, and then they'll each be able to pick up those pods. Indicate that by putting it over here, and then there with the pods. He'll just kind of stay where he's at. Squawk, he doesn't have any pods nearby, unfortunately. He's just going to spread out a little bit with his forces, I guess. He'll just move there. He'll just spread out by himself and leave his forces in the city. No combat. Draw the three turn cards that weren't used last time. Squawk will get a one. Drox will get a two. His arrow gets three. Deeps draw a card. Squawk gets a pod bonanza. Rex gets Gate Crashers. Kizaro gets Factoid Void. They're each going to just discard those cards because they're not as good as the others. Like placing a pod in area 2 doesn't help Squawk at all. So. Squawk's fortunate he can claim some pods. He'll move this one over here to claim this pod. And then he can move a soldier over here 
one, two, three to claim that bug. So Drax's extra benefit is that he can have seven cards. So we'll draw a couple more for him. So him a freeze, and he also gets the he gets a weapon of a neo osmotic gas emissions. We'll do his turn. He's going to start moving against Squawk's Fort. So he's going to move up here. One, two, three. Let's stay there. And then he'll, he can move here. I'll just stay in the water there. It's got to stop when it gets to the water. Hoover tanks can go four, so we'll move those as well. Move some soldiers. Gamma jets can go unlimited, so they'll just stay there for now. Trux is moving. He's got a couple soldiers here that need to bring these pods back to the fortress. Then those will deposit in the fortress. There's a pod down here, but he's got to move down there to get it, so... He isn't bothered by a train effect, so he can go over the water. no combat this turn. You turn to turn order cards. And they draw a card. Kazaro gets a ultra stellar iron beamer. That's nice. Another weapon. Trox gets a exospatial psionic aura. Then Squawk gets a reverse combat result, which is pretty good. He'll do that instead of a mass mutate. Then placing pods. Ten. Seven. And four. So movement then. Kazaro goes first. And he's going to use these cards. You can't, uh, he's got a weapon he wants to add, and he can't add a weapon to your Bioborg unless you either have a mutate or, or in your city. So he's going to use a mutate, place his beam there. Then he's going to teleport. He's going to go after. Drax the Pecoretula. So you can go one, two, three, four, five. And then also he has a teleport. Move any or all of your units in one area to any other area. He's got all his units in his fort that he's going to be heading over here. He's still going to keep uh, like six of them there, but these ones here I'll move over. Then Squawk the Penguinoid. He's gonna come over here to defend his fort and then he'll move these in so he gets the pods. Here's a rapid oxidation card he might use in case he gets attacked. Then Drex Pecretula. Obviously there's a lot going on here, so he's going to move in. And move in these forces as well, that can all make it back. <clears throat> Since he's back in his fort there, he can... He couldn't have previously used these weapons he got, but now that he's back in the fort he can retrofit. And put those back on. And then the battle, he also has army card super jets, which will give it more power as well. So we'll be doing that. When they get... So doing an example battle here. Gazaro is attacking the fortress of Dryox. So you total the attacking forces and defending forces. Gazaro has played the army card super jets, which doubles the effects of his gamma jets. So instead of one, he'll get two for those. 
and he's got two troops, two hover tanks, and two gamma jets. So that'll give him a total of two, two, and four. Ideally, you'll have hidden what weapons you're using, but he's uh, he's going to be using his ultra stellar ion beamer. And this is where it's difficult to play solitaire because you can't you know really keep that secret because it what immunity you have affects it. So his total then is six, eight, ten, fourteen. He gets to do a die roll just for being a bioborg. It's five. And then he has one energy pod he's gonna use. And he'll burn that. So he'll burn the energy pod, roll another dice for that. Gets a six. So his total is 25. And the defender, Drox. So he's got all his forces there. Um, this is just convenience for it's in the display, but basically all these are in the display. So he's got four soldiers, four Hoover tanks, four gamma jets for a total of 12. And then he's going to use, again, they're not, they don't know what each other's immunities are, but he's going to use his highest power card, which is the Neo Osmotic Gas Emissions for a six. So that's 18. And then he gets a die roll for being a, a Bioborg. Four. 24. And then he also gets a die roll for being a Fort. So right now he's at 24. So if he gets better than a one, he wins. Otherwise, it's a tie. Two. 26. So he's able to defend his Fort. And Kizaro loses one of his units. Drax gets to take a card from Kizaro's hand, and he'll randomly take a card. He gets the five finger discount. And then Kizaro loses the weapon card that he played. And he has to retreat his units one space. Hopefully that give you, gives you a sense about the play. So that's Gamma Rodders from TSR 1987. It's, a lot of, it's got a really nice art and uh, like the components, especially the, the layout pieces. Um, it's got a book that gives you the background history of it. It's got interesting, you know, strategy involved as far as, you know, playing cards as far as, um, you know, what weapons you're going to use, what special cards you're going to play for a battle or movement or against your opponent, etc. I was uh, a bit disappointed in that each of the, I mean, each of the characters has a unique ability, but... Um, that's hoping there'd be a little bit more difference between them. It's got the whole, you know, world book that talks about the history, and I think it would have been nice if, I mean, there's some optional stuff in there about if you want to follow that, you can say, okay, so-and-so is aligned with so-and-so or wants to fight the other one, but you don't have to do that. The actual mechanics between the individual cryptic alliances are all, you know, the same, basically the same, so... It would have been nice if there were, for the alliances, that you also had different, you know, abilities, like maybe the lab rats have science, so, you know, maybe they could do more card discovery or something, I don't know, or, um, I, I can see where if you had different abilities also, the different cryptic alliances, I think, would add, add more depth to it. It's okay as it is. Um, I... I it lost a lot in just playing solitaire, though. I think a lot of this is interactions of players. You trade cards, who you're grouping up against. You know, what are your alliances? Do you shift alliances? I think a lot of the enjoyability is probably that, and I didn't get to see that, of course. So it would be higher with that. I'd recommend it for a, you know, a group, for sure. Uh, 
points out, I mean, uh, their strategy, the mechanics are kind of basic. Um, the art adds a lot to it, but I'll, uh, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Gamma Rotters from TSR 1987. Thanks a lot.